I have a very interesting story to tell. First, let's go back seven years, when spirituality was not as popular and I was in search for a guru. My search for a guru was very purposeful. In my mind, I was looking for a person who would always be able to answer my questions so that I could intuitively feel that this was the truth. It's an inner search of someone who can become your guide in the world of spiritual growth, your coach, your mentor. I attended all kinds of events. Imram Kriya was just starting back then. They were organizing their first events. I visited everyone, but none of them resonated with me profoundly. My personality type requires depth. I also like getting deep into the subject of my interest. If I sense that a person is limited as a master and that he cannot give me a profound answer to my questions or queries, for me, he's not a master. I won't be able to follow this person for a long period of time. When I came here, the entire puzzle got pieced together at once. Throughout the last seven years, I never had a single doubt, a single concern that I made the wrong choice. I have been affirmed further that the Master's depth is so profound, so very broad. I could ask him any question or request, any help, and have the absolute trust in his judgment to give me the answer I needed. I'm talking about questions related to spiritual practices, life, family, work-related issues, communication with people. Simple things, but once you have a spiritual mentor, your path becomes smooth and very comfortable. I'm so glad that such a person exists and that many people perceive him this way. Going back to the same seven years ago, I was introduced to Kriya, received initiation and practices, and only now came to the actual retreat. Now I understand that it was a big bonus, which I didn't even realize at that time. Throughout these years I was doing the practice, but it wasn't deep practice. I didn't have a deep understanding of how valuable this tool is. I was very reluctant about the 42 Kriyas. I even talked to Master Imram about it. He said, how would you do the advanced techniques without preparing your body? There's no other way. You can try doing something else, like Hatha Yoga, for example, but you have to do something. 42 Kriyas made me trip out. It was really hard for me. Yesterday, when Khadija explained the values of each Kriya on all levels, I had such an incredible sense of gratitude that I was given such a tool in advance. I didn't understand it at the time, now I do and I'm strongly motivated to use it. Doing the first energization session after yesterday's lecture was a completely different experience, a different experience altogether. Once you're fully engaged in the process, once you're focused and understand what you want, you have a toolkit that works effectively with your body. When you are absolutely focused, you are moving on. You have got it all. Everything is cool, superb. I felt that there were no barriers at all. You only have to set up the right goals and just do it. That's it. It took me seven years to figure this out. We get often distracted. I had a stage when I was practicing a lot and I wanted to attend a retreat. At that time the retreats were held in India. I was planning to live in Sai Baba's ashram in India for a long time. I approached Master Imram. I was inwardly unprepared. I had a clear feeling that I was about to lose the point of control and the yana I knew, and some different story will start, that I wasn't ready for. The Master told me at that time, do what you need to do and come back. I now clearly understand what he was telling me back then. Seven years have passed, and I came here because people started coming to me looking for more. I teach yoga and nail standing, apart from doing other things. 
This is the practical aspect of my life. People started coming to me, and I realized that in order to give them more, I needed to practice more and go deeper myself. I recognized a subtle internal disharmony, as I wasn't able to give my students the level of advice I would expect myself from a teacher. I felt I needed to get back to practice. It turned out that the practice I was engaged in, and people who were coming to my classes, had brought me back into this practice to help me grow and improve myself, because that's the way it works. I walk up to the master and he said, so, you're back. That's what it is about. So, my only advice is not to waste your time. But everyone has their own path. Dare to try it. I totally agree that if something comes into your life, it means you are ready for it. If the disciple is ready, the master comes. It is not so easy for this information to get to people. If a person wasn't ready to accept it or comprehend it, it wouldn't have come to them. So you should definitely try and form your own opinion. Don't listen to anyone else, form your own opinion. If it hasn't resonated with you now, well, do what you need to do and come back. Hopefully not in seven years. That's where we're heading anyway. These events, the ones that are happening in the world right now, can be described from different perspectives, as increases in the number of planetary vibrations. The events that shake us up, like coronavirus, conflicts between countries, they heighten our awareness and bring us into the realm of communicating with each other, of building family values. Right now, families and family values are collapsing globally. They are collapsing since there's no internal basis, no structure. Nowadays, everyone is going back to spirituality, to religion, because these are the values that create the foundation for us to build something on. So everyone starts looking for this. And it's good that many masters come forth to talk about the importance of spirituality. I hope that people find the answers to all their questions, find the master who will become the strongest support for their own faith.